Hello everyone and welcome to the Simplify Payments podcast presented by Paramount Commerce. I'm your host Varad Mehta and in Simplify Payments we explore new and emerging financial technologies and practices with some amazing industry experts. In the fourth episode, we'll explore how the real-time rail will transform the way Canadians pay, send and receive money. Our expert for today is Bridget Carroll, Senior Policy Lead and Campaigns Manager for the Americas for WISE. So please sit back and enjoy the show. Okay, Bridget. So how we begin this podcast, as always, is by asking you a few fun questions. Um, so my first fun question is, if I were to visit Brussels, would you recommend having, uh, would you recommend me having the mussels or a nice waffle? Oh, I can't choose between the two. Both for sure. Both for sure? Yeah. What's more popular there? It seems like mussels is a really, really big thing down there. Yes, but you have to eat it in the right month. So what they say, it's the months ending in burr. So like September, October, Mm. November, December, I guess. Um, So I guess rest of the year, I would say waffle. Okay. Um, (laughs) But yeah, and everything there is good. The fries as well. Okay. Can't go wrong with waffles. Um, My second question is, uh, I saw that you're bilingual, multilingual, if I'm not mistaken. So do you think in English or do you think in French? Oh, so I've spoken French since I was five years old. I went to a French immersion school. So I I do think in French, not when I'm working in English, let's say. But I've definitely had dreams in French, which I think if you're not at a certain level, you're probably not doing that. So it's it's fun. I love, um, I think language and culture is so interesting. That's so fascinating. Um, And then two more questions. Uh, So what's the best place to go to if I wanted a really good view of the Mississippi River? Oh, of the Mississippi River. I guess River Road between Minneapolis and St. Paul. Yeah, thank God they researched it all. (laughs) You're like hoping. (laughs) I hope. Okay. That would be bad if I didn't know the answer to that being from Minneapolis. Can you imagine if I got it wrong? It's like, (laughs) did I look up the correct person? But no. Okay, cool. River Road is what uh, Bridget mentioned. So yes, River Road. You should have asked about uh, best view of Lake Superior because it could be Minnesota or Canada. There we go. More research next time. I'll I'll, I'll (laughs) keep that in mind. Um, And uh, last question is, I noticed that your university is really close to the Mall of America. Have you been to the Mall of America? Too many times. I wish that I have been. Um, You know, when it's too cold, and I'm sure Canadians have this too, we go to the mall to walk sometimes to do the laps. That's how big it is. Okay, there we go. (laughs) Malls being used for exercise. I love this. Okay. Um, Now, just moving on to the topic of discussion, uh, we want to talk about real-time rails and then potentially making their way into Canada in the next few years. Uh, And Bridget, you're an expert within this. um, And I'd like to, first of all, ask you that, you know, uh, recently in the news, it was said that Payments Canada has announced that there's going to be industry testing for the real-time rails starting in about 2026. So why is just getting this timeline so important for this payment rail? So there have been several delays with the real-time rail, um, and we won't focus on that because I think we're really excited to see actual timeline set, and it's really important because if we don't have a timeline, we're not going to stick to it. Uh, The industry, especially I think fintechs, have been keen to see this come up and ready and serve Canadians. Um, And so this is just part of really the broader Canadian government's plans to modernize the payment system Um, and real-time rail will be a a key part of that. Um, You know, we believe sending money should be instant, convenient, transparent, and affordable. Instant is a key part of that. And so while over 60% of WISE's payments around the world are already instant, so we consider that less than 20 seconds, um, we can get that number higher the more real-time rails that we have around the world. Um, so we're really excited to see that come to life, um, but also hopefully access it as a payments company. 
No, definitely. And I'm, I'm assuming you must have also looked at other markets where open banking kind of exists. Um, could you tell me why within Canada, the introduction of the real time real is so important, not only for maybe for both for, for maybe the financial landscape as well as consumers. And, you know, even from your perspective, why is it important for companies such as wise? It's funny when I, was living in Europe and then I moved back to the US, I got really used to fast payments. So, you know, you pay your rent with an instant payment. And I moved back to the US and I realized that wasn't the case. And I think that's probably a similar experience if you move back to Canada. Um, and it's incredible how it becomes the norm and that kind of ease and convenience is hugely beneficial for consumers. I think one of the number one questions we get asked at WISE is, where is my money? So especially when you send money cross border, that can be really sort of worrying, stressful to know, you know, when is my payment going to get there? And what we see is that when payments are instant, um, cu customer satisfaction doubles. So there's a really clear benefit for everyday Canadians with getting this live. Uh, we also hear from, you know, Canadian customers who have to drive hours and hours across their province to go to a bank branch to send a cross border payment at a very high cost, but then also that payment takes days uh, to come through on the other side. And it just doesn't have to be that way. So with real-time rail, this will help um, new Canadians who send money cross-border, also small businesses, you know, obviously in a trading economy, that's really key, getting money to the US or other places faster. So it's unlocking instant liquidity and things like that. Um, so there are a lot of benefits that I think will come through thanks to the real time realm. And kind of like uh, going further on that point, how do you think it kind of compares to other payment rails that already exist? You can talk about, you know, the States or even potentially Canada. Uh, if you could give us like an example and just see the comparison between both. Yeah. So I would take, um, like the UK is a, a stellar example and then the U S is maybe a more recent one. Um, so the UK launched their faster payment system years ago and actually WISE was one of the first non-banks to connect directly to that scheme in 2018. Um, and that's so six years ago now. Um, when we did that, we were able to immediately lower the cost for those customers by 20% and increase the speed of payments from about 15 minutes to less than 20 seconds. So again, you can see the real benefit that, you know, people were able to, to see after we gained that access. The US, we've seen FedNow, so the equivalent of the real-time rail in the US come live. Granted, it's only uh, limited to banks and sort of traditional depository institutions. So in terms of uptake, I think now it's a, it's a different landscape, right? There are a huge amount of banks and credit unions across the US. The, more than 10,000, I believe. So getting that number of uptake will be quite difficult. Um, I think in Canada, there's a, a bigger opportunity in terms of, it's a little bit more of a concentrated market in terms of the big, you know, five or six Canadian banks, um, and then a growing FinTech uh, ecosystem. So hopefully when the real time rail goes live, you know, there'll be room to really drive uptake quickly um, and with the government's move to open up access to the system to registered payment service providers, so regulated payments firms, um, that will also drive uptake. Because what we saw was that in the UK, for example, when they opened up access to fintechs, the number of participants in the real-time rail doubled. It's basically driving competition because if you know, you're at one bank and you can get fast payments, uh, other customers want that as well. And so it really is a, a virtuous cycle. And I, I think we'll hopefully see that happen in Canada. That's awesome. And yeah, I think uh, one story that, um, you know, was like really popular when we spoke about like fintechs in Canada, plus, you know, the real time rail is the well simple story that they became the first fintech to gain early access to the RTR. Uh, I believe when 2026 or 2027, when it's kind of out there, they'll be the first kind of fintech to kind of have that. So can you tell us why this early access is important um, and why in general it's important for fintechs in Canada? Yeah, so I it's really encouraging to see a player like Wealthsimple, you know, integrating into the payment system. Um, you know, they've been at sort of the forefront 
I think, in terms of fintech innovation in Canada, um, and certainly sort of like-minded, I would say, organizations compared to WISE. Um, so early access, one, I think it'll just help them them test and give feedback like as an innovative and tech driven company um, and also to driving competition and choice. So like I said, with the UK example, that is going to spur, you know, the big banks to think about, you know, using the real time rail as well. So I think it's a good thing. It'll lead to more diverse options, more choice for Canadians. Um, and we're hoping, you know, eventually to to join the system as well. So yeah, looking forward to seeing how that all plays out, but the industry testing phase will be very important. And my, my sort of last question would be, I know you've been uh, doing the rounds uh, in Canada, talking about RTR um, and all that stuff, uh, you know, been a been big advocate. Um, so what do you think the next steps or the future is? What's gonna kind of happen? And uh, you mentioned that there's going to be great competition. Uh, do you foresee more innovation coming into the space because of this? Um, and, uh, you know, instant payments for consumers is going to be like a great thing, especially where, you know, more new industries are coming in, like iGaming, sports betting. So what do you think is next? And then what do you think it's going to happen overall when it does get introduced in a couple of years? So I think... Gosh, first big we need question. To get it live. Oh, yeah, it's a really big question. No, I think it, it's all really exciting. And I'm curious to see with the combination of open banking coming to Canada plus the real time rail, like how those interact. Because I think open banking also can introduce, like we often think about it like giving um, consumer power over their data, right? But it can also be a tool for comparison shopping and making data public so that, for example, you could go to an aggregator or, or sort of a comparison website that would show you, you know, all of the cross-border payments options you have, and you could compare and contrast fees in a really transparent way. I think that's what really excites me. I think the other thing is this conversation about junk fees, and especially in this sort of affordability crisis, is not going to go away. We've seen that in the U.S., I also think I've seen similar kind of narratives in Canada. So I'm curious to see, of course, with my political hat on going into 2025, like what will happen there? Obviously, WISE is you know laser focused on bringing transparency into the market. I think consumers, like the momentum is going one way and that's toward empowering consumers. So whether that's demanding more speed, whether that's demanding lower fees, more transparency, more convenience. Um, I think it's only going to go in that direction. So excited to see it. Oh, perfect. So thank you so much, Bridget, for joining us. You know, this is one of those topics that you want to like punch in, get the media's content out there. And I think, I hope we kind of did that with this episode. And that's the main focus because this has been a topic that has been discussed over the years. And now that there's kind of some good news out there, it's good for people to kind of get a refresher on the topic of real-time rails, and especially from an amazing expert such as yourself. So thank you so much for this. And uh, if I do visit the Mall of America or Brussels, I'm gonna keep your advice in mind. So exercise and muscles in the ember ending months. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. That is our episode for today. I want to thank Bridget Carroll, Senior Policy Lead and Campaigns Manager for the Americas and WISE for joining us today and explaining the significance of the real-time rail. If you have any questions for us or Bridget, please do comment them down below. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For more amazing content, please visit ParamountCommerce.com. Thank you so much for tuning into the Simplify Payments podcast presented by Paramount Commerce. I'm your host, Varad Mehta, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>